You know, I, I, I'm not saying that Austin Powers 1 is the best comedy ever made. It's not even the best comedy of the 90s. It's probably not even the best comedy of 1997. But I was thinking about how so many of the quotes live in my head completely rent-free. Like, I was thinking last night, um, I put the baby to sleep. Half an hour later, she woke up uh, and she was crying. I checked out her room. She'd thrown up a little marinara sauce on her sleep sack and on her mattress cover. So I had to strip the whole mattress down, change the sleep sack. I woke up, Kate, where's the new mattress cover? She's like, the mattress cover was in the washing machine. So we had to get like a swaddling blanket from when she was a newborn. And then we had to like make it like a, like a makeshift mattress. Anyway, long story short, we, we got her back in the, in the crib and then uh, she was laying down and I kept trying, like she'd fall asleep and I would try to like get my hand out of her hand so I could escape and go to sleep myself because I don't want to sleep on the floor. And uh, she would always like just give me the death grip even when she's asleep. It was crazy. And I kept thinking, Austin needs his hand back. You know, when he's getting a call from Basil Exposition to go visit a lot of vagina after his night with Vanessa. And, and the, the phone goes, do 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 and then, obvious, so that's one Austin Powers thing that lives in my head rent-free. Um, whenever you take a long pee, that's like Austin Powers when he's uh, woken up from the unfreezing process. Whenever um, you're, you're trying to parallel park, but you can't get it quite right, that's Austin powers like when he was in the, the golf cart and he can't seem to do the three-point turn. There's so much stuff from that movie that like, is, has seeped deep into the cultural foundation. And that's only like three things I'm thinking of, right? Like one million dollars. There's so many. Anyway, we're doing React Court. Sorry. I, we, I just thought it would be funny to start by talking about Austin Powers because I was thinking about it. It's a Germa bit. Excuse me. Germa gets to most of his bits before me, okay? However, you can go back. Um, Dark Souls 2. I'm trying to fight the old Iron King. The run-up is the biggest nightmare of all time. I'm playing the Quincy Jones, Quincy Jones Bossa Nova Thriller, whatever the theme song's called. That's from like 2018, okay? That one, the Austin Powers infatuation is mine, please. Soul Bossa Nova, that's what it's called. <clears throat> anyway, it's React Court. Let's find the most insane people on the internet, one of the least fine legal minds the world has ever known. You ready for this? It's probably this one. Full Wait, React Court Real. It's probably this one, if I had to guess. That looks right. Am I the asshole for telling my husband to get over himself when he started berating me for not picking up his brother's son from school? So you're... First off, why are you putting on airs is the first thing that I say here. Your husband's brother's son is your nephew. Why are you trying to make it seem like you're not related to this person? Like whenever I talk about my nieces, I don't say my wife's sister's kids. They're my nieces. It's like you're trying to trick people into thinking that like you don't have a relationship with this kid, but you do. You're, you're their aunt. Or their aunt, as I like to say. And then I got overcorrected by Korean children when I was teaching ESL. So now I'm self-conscious about saying aunt. So I say aunt. And then people are like, why are you trying to be British? And I'm like, I'm not. This is the, the kids I taught in South Korea had an Australian teacher. And now for the rest of my life, I got to say aunt. Because I'm sick of getting corrected by nine-year-olds. Anyway, my husband, 37, took his nephew in after his dad, my husband's brother, was diagnosed with cancer. He told me that his nephew would be staying with us till his dad completes his chemo treatment. I agreed, although he did not consult me about it at first. But I told him that he'll be his responsibility, not mine. Sanest, um, sanest spouse on earth? Are you crazy? T talk about, like, main character syndrome. Is a 12-year-old kid who is, uh, again, your nephew dealing with... Uh, you know, a, a serious illness for his father, and you're like, okay, fine, we can get it. We can get a kid, but it'll be your responsibility. You're gonna have to walk it. You're gonna have to uh, to clean its poop up. You're gonna have to take it to the 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 kid vet or whatever they're called. Like this is crazy. 
He asked me to explain why, and I told him because he didn't consult me before taking his nephew in, and I'm not equipped nor experienced in taking care slash being committed to childcare. I still have to cook and clean, obviously. He said it was fine, and he'd be taking care of, of him on his own. The other day, he called me in the afternoon saying he was stuck in a two-hour meeting and asked if I could go pick up his nephew. His nephew?! That's your nephew, lady! What are you th Why are you writing it like this? Do you think we're stupid? Like, we can read between the lines. His nephew is your nephew. Is, is our nephew. I said I was having lunch with my mom and discussing family issues. He insisted I would remind him... He, he insisted, but I reminded him that he said he'd be taking care of his nephew, including school pickup drop-off. I suggested he try to get off work or call some family member to go pick him up. <laughs> Some family member like, uh, like maybe like his uh, spouse, like the person who's supposed to be on his team in all but the most extreme issues possible. Uh, he tried to argue, but I hung up. Okay, so it seems like an appropriate and adult response to it. I went home at three and surprisingly found my husband there. He was angry. He started yelling at me, calling me selfish and unfeeling. I told him his lack of management wasn't my fault. He yelled at me saying my lunch with my mom could have fucking waited. Here's the thing. I was on her husband's side for a while. I thought his wife was acting a little selfish, a little juvenile. Um, but then apparently he said the F word. And it's not even her nephew anyway. So now... It's a toss-up. I mean, sure, this is a serious issue. I understand it's a serious adult issue with adult consequences. That's no reason to, to use a, a word as loaded as the F word. I don't even want to say it myself personally. Like, that's, that, that, that word, it carries a lot of power. I would only use that in serious situations, like maybe like a stand-up comedy routine or when my, uh, when my favorite NHL team has set a new NHL record by uh, blowing a multiple goal lead in four consecutive games to start the season. But I chose to be effing petty just to prove a point. I said that wasn't true and told him to get over himself and stop acting like he's the victim when he put himself in this situation knowing he wouldn't commit. He wouldn't commit. He yelled that he was trying to do all he can to help his brother out, but it's me who's playing the victim after I refused to help out. We argued some more and I ended up going to stay with my mom for the night. He texted me some choice words. That's when I turned my phone off. I can't, uh, can't help but notice every single situation uh, when you start to have an argument, you just disconnect from it completely. But maybe that's something you can work on after the, the issue to begin with. But he, I, I said my case, he tried to argue with me, and I just closed my eyes and covered my ears and said, la 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 la, I can't hear you. <clears throat> this thread is now locked due to an excess of rule violations. Okay, I mean, this is like a, this is a warm-up, you know? This is 20 to 40 resistance, 80 to 100 cadence, like, this is a gimme. Obviously, you're the asshole. Um, you know, part of, be, you, you, listen, okay? I'm, I'm kid-pilled. I have a child myself. So I, sometimes I get accused of being a little bit biased here. But the beauty of family is that you have support. You have stability. You've always got people around. You help them. They help you, you know? And then two, three times a year you get together. You have a nice meal of, of either ham or turkey together. Um, you go out to a restaurant, you argue with the other family about who's going to pay the bill, it starts an arms race, they grab the bill out of your hands when you're about to pay for it, next time you go out, you say, I'm going to go to the bathroom, instead you go to the front counter and say, hey, I want to pay for table seven over there, when you get back, they're like, thanks for paying, next time, as soon as you sit down, they're like, just so you know, this gentleman already called the restaurant and said he's paying for everything, I don't know what happens after that, I'm currently living it, you might have to purchase the restaurant, after that in order to ensure that they can't steal the bill from you it never ends but regardless that that's the beauty of family and then the penalty is that you also have to you know like john lennon said the in the end the love you make is equal to the love you take so if you're or vice versa so you've got to be there when members of your family even if you know they haven't scratched your back recently need help. Like, for example, when a 12-year-old a child needs some support because his dad is going through an unfortunate illness, you know? So 
unfortunately, just the fact that you don't feel like taking care of your nephew is not really like a, a good reason to be extremely derelict in your duties to begin with. And then on top of that, you don't even have to be like the aunt of the century in this situation. You just have to be like, sorry, mom, lunch is, uh, I, I got to cut lunch a little early today because I got to go pick up my nephew from school instead of letting him sit there like in tears for two hours or something or causing my husband to get reprimanded at his job. Like uh, you, you really just need to just drive your car to the school and pick him up and then you wouldn't have a, a problem. And you can like be a little upset. You can be like, oh, I had this I had this lunch planned with my mom for a while, but you also, again, this is just my personal, the lens through the, which I consider a lot of things like in my life. Sometimes being an adult is being like, hey, I'm going to feel like a bad emotion from doing this thing, but it's the right thing to do. Like, for example, when I spent uh, an hour and a half putting the baby to sleep last night, and then I was like, oh, finally, I'm going to like do some YouTube work. And 20 minutes later, I heard her crying. I wasn't like, oh, well, I already spent 90 minutes trying to put her to sleep. Like, I'm just going to let her go. Even like, I, I've got a good reason. I got stuff to do. Hey, hey, baby, I've got my own work to do. Maybe you can handle your own stuff for, for now. I just went up and, uh, you know, I, I, I dealt with it because that's kind of what you sign up for. Yeah, my wife's daughter's crying again. I'll plus to you on that one. Uh, excuse me, Kate, your baby is crying. Anyway, I'm, I got to make some toast. But, you know, I understand that's my kid and this is only her nephew. But still, it's, it's just an analogy. You know, part of being a mature adult and especially, you know, like as a as a, an, an aunt or an uncle, you don't have the same responsibility that like the parents have. But you do kind of whether you signed up for it or not, there is kind of like an unspoken like eye contact that's like, if, if we fucking go down in a plane crash, you got these two rugrats, right? If we go down, if, if we get in like some horrific accident or something like that, you got us covered. And you're like, yeah, but please like put your seatbelts on because I don't want to. <laughs> I'd rather not. Anyway. Yeah, if we get gunned down by Joe Chill after the opera, you got, you got this kid, right? Anyway, it's like you got to, whether you signed up for it or not, that's what it means to being, uh, that's what it means to be like a responsible adult. If it's another adult, like I hate to say it, if their nephew was like literally 18 years old in one day, he can take the bus, okay? When your nephew's in middle school, you got to nut up and be a sensible adult and be like, okay, I'm going to sacrifice a little bit of my emotional well-being in order to ensure that a child has a safe environment. Like, that's just what it means to be a, a sane adult who's not a bad person. D disrespect intended. Anyway, um, user received just a staggering amount of, of uh, Reddit awards for this post. I suggested he call some family members to go pick him up. That's exactly what he did. His wife, who should be a partner in the relationship, you... Uh, you're displaying zero empathy to a family suffering through the effects of cancer. This is true. You better hope you never get cancer because I'm not sure you'll have a support system. Okay, you went for the throat. That's one of many reasons I think that you should hope that you don't get a bad disease. Um, it's just, I mean, you know what? Go in. I, I'm not sure that I like this OP. I'm going to give you my license to make uh, d d uh, glib personal attacks, okay? Just kidding. In Minecraft. You're the asshole, cold, heartless, and petty. Also weird that you're married, yet you choose to call this child your husband's nephew. Never once do you say our nephew. <clears throat> um, there's got to be like a Bugs Bunny joke here, right? When my nephew needs something, my husband's nephew. When I need something from my nephew, our nephew. You could, you could make it work. I can't uh, like come up with it on the fly. I'm not exactly like a meme wizard or anything, but... Um, wow, this is the most cold-hearted shit I've ever read. That's a little much, but I can understand. Maybe they're not, maybe they haven't read that many great works of literature or, or history or whatever. But, um, well, well, I mean, they're going to be right, so let's pass this one. Everybody sucks here. Your husband should not have sprung an entire child on you without consultation. Listen, it's not uh, like he picked up uh, a... a 
a dog from the pet store, right? Like this isn't like he had a lifelong dream of always wanting a nephew. This is, uh, it's like a serious, you can't King Solomon this, you know? This is like a, it, it came out of nowhere. He, he can't, yeah, he can't say no. Like what is his brother? Put, put yourself in the husband's shoes, right? The, your brother gets cancer and is like, can you take after my kid? And you're like, Mm, no, I, I, I don't say this very much in react court, you know, usually I, I, I come at this from the lens of like you and your spouse are 100% in 99.99% in of situations, you got to be on the same team, you know, even with, within reason, you're unified against the world, you're unified against your HOA together, you're unified sometimes against each other's families together, you, you build that, that wall around yourselves, you try to, you know, live copacetically with everybody, but at the end of the day, you're like, we, we, we got each other, right? This is like the only situation that we've had so far where I'm like, this is not the case. I feel like if your brother gets cancer and is like, please take care of my child for us, and then your spouse says no, then that's a situation where like, you're like, well, I got to like leave you then. This is like one order of magnitude more important than, than the one and one on one relationship with the spouse. So I, I feel like co consultation is good, but she literally, if she says no, it's an insane deal breaker. Anyway. So I, I disagree with this. He should have asked, but it's a temporary arrangement during an illness. There's an order of magnitude difference in the assholery here. Doing an asshole thing with good intentions is still doing an asshole thing. And bringing a child into the home for whatever reason without any notice to your partner is an asshole move. Sorry that um, cancer exists. Talk, talk about dealing in absolutes. My spouse got into a car accident and died. I needed that car to get to brunch tomorrow. Now I've got to take an Uber. Well, everybody sucks here. You suck here because you don't have any empathy for um, your spouse or the person that your spouse hit with their car. On the other hand, your spouse really left you out to dry by getting into a lethal car accident and stranding you without a vehicle. So I would say this is a 50-50 situation. I would say everybody sucks here. If he was going to get into an accident, he should have gotten into an accident uh, on his bicycle or maybe like in a taxi or something like that. He shouldn't have taken the only vehicle that your household had available and then had the audacity to crash it. I am this, this every this everybody sucks here. This all caps me me when I'm agreeing with the worst take I've seen in weeks. This so much this finally. Everybody sucks here. OP could have more empathy for the child, but it's a dick move to spring an entire child on your spouse without consulting them at all beforehand and giving them no say and then berating them and calling them names when they don't uh, show the bare minimum amount of humanity to a child that is part of their family. Literally, all they had to do was pick them up from school and cut their lunch a little short, uh, recognize that they could even go through like the McDonald's drive through on the way home or something like that. Oh... I can understand why OP is pissed. All right, you guys sound perfect for each other. Why don't you like uh, get married and live in the same house and then just look at your phones all the time and never have a conversation? Okay. Anyway, let's let's see what else we got here. Am I the asshole for making my younger sisters fly home early after they followed my husband? I don't understand the, the it's kind of like a, 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 a thumb, not a thumbnail, a, a title that I, I don't fully understand the implications of. <clears throat> I have two younger sisters who are 15 and 17. They came to visit my husband and I on what was supposed to be a five week trip. Okay, congratulations, by the way. You're the asshole. What's your job? What's your job title? A five week vacation? People these days, lucky enough to get a damn, a three-hour tour, a three-hour tour. You're getting a five-week vacation? Oh, wait, they're European. Okay, well, thank you for your service. Never mind. Congratulations. Next, you're going to tell me you get more than two weeks for maternity leave, too. 
Okay. They came to visit my husband and I on what was supposed to be a five-week trip. Unfortunately, it had to end early after they were caught following my husband after he was having dinner with a client. I told them they had to leave immediately because I was, could tell my husband was close to exploding. And even though they kept begging me to hear them out and to let them stay, I wouldn't. I called our dad to let... They, I called our dad to let him know they would be coming home early and why which didn't go over well. My stepmother wanted me... My stepmother wanted me to let them stay until the morning so they would fly back in the daytime, but I told her it wasn't possible and they had to leave immediately. I'm supposed to be visiting soon, but my sisters have told our dad they don't want to see me and my stepmother and my, and my stepmother said I wasn't. Well, what are you talking about? I just asked you to proofread it one time. There's not enough information here. I, I can't read it. It's, it does, it's like AI generated, man. I'm supposed to be visiting soon, but my sisters have told our dad they don't want to see me and my stepmother said I wasn't welcome in her house after what I did to them. Maybe it was my own fault. Maybe I was having a stroke there. I'd like to apologize. Am I the asshole for blaming someone else for me not being able to read? The reason my husband was so angry is because the client was the one who noticed them taking pictures of them, and when he confronted them, they were rude to her and to him. Am I the asshole? Okay, so your sisters are 15 and 17 years old. They thought they were in a cheeky little, like, a, like an Olsen twins movie they they were like hey let's they they thought maybe your husband works for the cia or something like that they were gonna go they they thought that maybe he's going to meet someone and he's gonna cheat on you but actually if they spy on him they realize oh my god he's actually meeting with like a foreign dignitary and something's go oh dude like something bad's gonna happen and then they gotta figure out how to tell the news but no one will believe them because they're 15 and 17 years old. And then they, so they, they were just having a little adventure, okay? And that's fine. I don't know. Is, am I the asshole for thinking this one's just not that interesting? The, the actual meat and potatoes of this is who cares that a 15 and 17 year old were spying on your husband eating dinner? That, and uh, taking photos is maybe like a step too far. It's a little weird at least. The actual like asshole move is that you not only said you guys have to leave, but you put them on like the first flight back, uh, even though it was a red eye, instead of just allowing them to sleep and then leave in the morning. It's just weird. I don't know. I don't know if anybody's the asshole here. I think this is just a strange situation. I don't... <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm offensive. I don't take it that seriously. Also, why is your husband meeting a client on vacation? You can't have it both ways. You can't be like, well, you ruined our vacation, but meanwhile, he was having like a work meeting. Anyway, listen, I don't know. This one, I just don't know if there's enough meat on the bone, honestly. I don't know what's, I don't understand why you're so mad. Only the sisters were on vacation? What? <laughs> oh, okay. So it's like the kids' summer vacation trip? And they, I, listen, I don't know. They, everybody sucks here just because I can't read. That's my, uh, that's my take on it. I forgot how to read. As a result, I cannot appropriately interpret this. I declare a React Court mistrial. And uh, why, why don't you rewrite your post and we'll get another judge on this one and we'll figure it out, okay? How about that? Because this, we, I don't think in good, I must recuse myself, Okay. We're going to send this to a different court. Am I the asshole for not letting my daughter buy clothes? Listen, you got to learn how to write a title. That's, this is one of the most insane titles I've ever heard in my entire life. Let's see what's going on here. My wife and I have four kids. 14F and 14M. 12 male and 11F. Okay, so here's the thing. Some people out there are just built different. You had your first kids at age 23. They were twins. About a year later, you said, yeah, I'll re-up on that. Are you crazy? What's wrong with you? <laughs> you didn't want to just get, get like a couple of extra years to really get a handle on it, on, on things? You were like roughly 12 months after having twins. You're like, yeah, I could, you know what? I'll buy into this. I'll re-up.
No doubt about it. Sign me up. And then a year at, like, listen, four, one, one set of them is, is twins, fair enough. But four kids within three years of each other is crazy, man. You can do it. Like, I'm not saying it should be illegal. I'm just saying, like, you know, have some self-care. Like, that's, uh, that is crazy. I am saying it should be illegal. I mean, this is a lot, man. This, you're right. This is you asked for a difficulty. Isn't that just Sips? No, I think Sips has like... Sips has three kids, right? His oldest is like 10 and his youngest is one. That's pretty sensible. I could understand that. Four kids within three years of each other. I mean, just get ready, because like, and again, you know, you could do whatever you want with your life. Maybe some people want big families. It's weird to me to have four kids within three years and then not have 20 kids total. Hello. Hello. Thank you oh, thank you. Welcome back. Oh, I have my, uh, have my fan stuck to it because it's a magnet. I get it. You look nice. Thank you. It didn't matter, though. As soon as they, like, yeah. Uh, Hello. The, um, I, I'm just surprised that having four kids in three years and then not going like completely to the John and Kate plus eight level. Like you were in such a rush and then you, it, it, it's like uh, Tabata. You did like four years on, four years off. It, it, you, I, I would have thought, that, listen, I guess maybe you want them all to be of roughly the same age. My, my parents, they only had one kid that they know of. I was, uh, I was born when my mom was like 22. I'm sure they were young. Like they felt young at the time. But now they're like peers. You know, now they're in their mid to late 50s. I'm in my mid 30s. Early to mid 30s. And it's like we can hang out. So I can understand like trying to, like having your kids at a young age has some advantages overall. I don't know. I'm just surprised. Also, like you're going to have two 18-year-old twins, a 16-year-old boy and a 15-year-old girl in your house. You're asking for like the worst middle age of like your entire life but i guess like then it's over in four years or something also yeah all four of your kids possibly going to be in college at the same time that's a long listen i'm i guess i'm saying you're not the asshole because i think you just got to treat yourself anyway sorry stunlocked by the first sentence <clears throat> you still haven't read the post yeah i haven't even gotten to the first comma yet um we generally agree on parenting them, but a recent incident had me and my wife disagreeing, and I want to see if I was in the wrong. A few weeks ago, I was at home with our 12-year-old because he was... How do you have time to write this post? Shouldn't your ass be, like, ground down in the, in the bone meal right now? How do you have time to write eight paragraph Am I the Asshole threads on red? Like, it doesn't seem... Because <laughs> it's fake. But if it's not, but if it's not... I was at home with our 12-year-old because he was sick with a stomach bug. Okay, again, I'm getting stunlocked again. Do you have to... I think if your kid is 12, they can stay home from school by themselves. They don't, you don't need to be home just because your kid is home. I mean, when they're like five, for sure. When they're 12? Come on. You just have them lock the door. Don't open it for anybody. And then like... You know, here's like, there's bread and meat in the fridge. You can make yourself a sandwich. You can't be, with four kids, I'm sorry, you can't be taking time off from work every time one of them gets a stomach bug. It's too, you, you, you gave up that right when you had four kids in three years. They're puking all over? They're 12. Like, I wouldn't let them drive a car, but I trust them to go to the bathroom and throw up in the toilet. You can get themselves like a glass of water. I'm not, I didn't even grow up old school. I grew up like insanely sheltered. I could still, uh, like I, if I was home, if I was sick in the like sixth or seventh grade, my parents would just be like, okay, don't do anything I wouldn't do. I just play like, you know, N64 all day. I'm getting so many minus twos. Where did we go? When did we get so soft as a society? 
It's driving me crazy. They're 12, man. A hundred years, well, no, no, no. Okay, a thousand years ago, they could be elected like the consul of Rome, and now we can't even trust them to throw up in the toilet? There's nobody else see how messed up this is? Anyway, while I was making him soup, he, you, you're telling me this 12-year-old kid can't use a can opener? I'm not asking him to, you know, chiffonade his own uh, bay leaf and, and make a mirepoix or something like that. Like, it's just... Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I just think it's so... It's What do you get when you cross a society that doesn't care about people with a... I got a call from my twins' high school telling me they wanted to speak with me and that my daughter had received three days of in-school suspension for a bullying incident. Because of my son's sickness, I spoke through them via the phone. You spoke through them? Like the, the way that the Lord speaks through a, a, a minister? <laughs> like the way a poltergeist speaks through your television set? And told, them, told me everything that had happened. My daughter and a group of friends were picking on a boy for wearing a crop top. The boy told the teacher she asked them to stop. When they didn't stop, she sent them to the office. After talking to the boy, he admitted the bullying was going on for a few days and that they kept bothering him when he asked them to stop. My daughter and son came home and my son's face was bright red. I told my daughter to go to a room that sat down with my son to see if he was okay. Apparently, I, I'm already so confused. Apparently, the boy she bullied was a close friend of his, one of his football teammates. The boy was talking to my son and their other friends and said something about how he thought it was cool that some men used to wear sports crop tops. The boys told him if he thought it was cool, he should try it. The boys went out and bought some jerseys from the thrift store and made them into crop tops. Just boys being dudes. Just me and my, uh, my, my high school friends uh, going out to the thrift store, buying some sports jerseys, turning them into crop tops, wearing them to school. Me showing off uh, my uh, being the only 10th grader in the whole school who has hair on his belly button. I then spoke to my daughter. She didn't show much remorse and was dismissive of me. Last year, she also got in trouble for bullying someone because of clothing. She's also gotten in trouble for racism at school? What the hell, man? That's like, all the crop top stuff is pretty bad, but like you were really burying the lead on this one. When my wife got home, we discussed the punishment and agreed on her not buying new clothes for a while. She has plenty of, new cl of good clothes already. The worst punishment of all time? You, you were racist at school. We're not going to let you buy new clothes. This weekend, we went to visit my brother. My brother lives around three hours away in a small town. We don't see him often. This week was the town's annual fair. Listen, it's called an annual fair, okay? It only comes once a year. Can we not just act like a happy family for the sacred event that is my brother's town's annual fair? If we can't hold it together for the annual fair, I don't think this family's got a chance, man. It's a sacred day of observance. At the fair, they had booths from local businesses. Our oldest son went to the booth with antique sports stuff and then the book booth to get books on sports history. Son li loves reading about those. Our 12-year-old got some plushies and toys and our youngest was looking at video games. So a word problem. Our oldest daughter went to the close. I stopped her, told her the rule was still in place. I said, hey, listen, Re don't you remember how you were so racist? I won't let you buy clothes. That being said, if you want books, a video game, candy, or etc., that's totally fine. That's completely acceptable. But clothes are the one thing you cannot get. She was bugging my wife, and my wife eventually told her she would reconsider it. She then talked to me and I told her that I wasn't changing my stance because I'm letting her buy other stuff and I thought she was being entitled. My daughter didn't buy anything and my wife thinks I was too tough on her. Are you crazy? I love this is framed as if like, I'm, I'm kind of a hard ass. I don't let anything go in my house. We have standards of decorum that we have to live with. Am I the asshole for being a... a Marine Corps sergeant of a dad. I, and I guarantee all the comments are like, you're, you're too soft. You're not even close to being tough enough. 
This is, is madness. When I called my mom for advice, she also agreed with my wife. Am I the asshole? Um, I mean, I think I've said what I need to say. If a 14-year-old is racist and a bully and her only punishment is not getting clothes for a while, holy cow. The user received a Reddit uh, lithium light bulb for this post. Edit day two, thank you so much for the awards. I accept it with humility for I am but a humble sheep. Ladies and gentlemen, we struck gold. Everybody sucks here except your other kids that we know of. Your re response to your daughter's continued behavior as a bully is to, you can't use italics two times in the same paragraph because the second italics undermines the strength that was implied with the first italics, okay? You can't use italics two times in the same paragraph. They have to be used sparingly. Your response to your daughter's continued behavior as a bully are to simply restrict her from buying clothes so candy and toys are okay. How is that a punishment? And your wife can't even manage that. No wonder your daughter has a problem. You guys need to implement consistent and actual consequences for her actions and teach her why bullying is unacceptable. She's more than old enough to learn compassion. Also, living in a predominantly white neighborhood does not excuse you for failing to teach her to be aware of other races and cultures. You only have a few years left with her. Get on it. Okay? This is all pretty reasonable. Perhaps it's time to delve further into why your daughter has such an easy time getting into the white supremacist rhetoric and why you and your wife have such a cavalier response to it. Start these conversations at home. Sane, sane Redditor. I can't believe it. I'm so, with the, the thanks for the gold kind stranger primed me to believe that we were going to read something insane, but uh, instead they are but a, but a humble sheep. Okay, everybody sucks here. You're uh, bad at being a dad. <laughs> Other than buying clothes, how are you handling the fact that your child is a racist bully? Uh, chose to ignore that one. Everybody sucks here. <laughs> okay, here we go. I commend you for sticking to your guns. The, the bare minimum level of commendation. However, that is the weakest punishment I've ever heard of. No, he could have had a worse punishment. If his daughter was being racist, he could have said, hey, no racism for one week. I think that would have taught her the wrong lesson. Instead, he, he said, no buying new clothes for an indeterminate length of time. If she's like really into fashion, that, that could be very, very slightly like inconvenient. Not the asshole. Wait, uh, hold on. This is above Reddit's pay grade. That's where you're wrong. This is where I get all of my hot takes on uh, parenting, uh, foreign policy, the economy. This is pretty much a one-stop shop for things that are above the internet's pay grade. And I, I'm glad it's not changing anytime soon. Well, anyway, it sounds like, uh, yeah, everybody sucks here. It seems like, um, obviously, your daughter, despite being 14, is uh, not a nice person. It seems like... Um, you should um, grow a spine. How do you, like, honestly, how do you parent four kids that have made it from, like, zero to 14 and, like, not have the ability to stick to your guns even a little bit? Like, that's crazy. I don't think I'm a harsh parent. And honestly, at the same time, like, I haven't had, like, any serious issues because my daughter's, like, two years old. But even then, sometimes like I give my kid a chocolate egg and then she's like, I want another chocolate egg. And I'm like, are you crazy? I'm not going to be the guy who's going to give you two chocolate eggs. You're, I'm not that guy, pal. I'm not that guy. You get one chocolate egg. I'm not going to give her two chocolate eggs. It's not good for her. She gives, one chocolate egg isn't good for her. I compromise by giving her one chocolate egg. You're the asshole? I, I accept that. I don't want her to be 20 years old and she has like a rough day at work. She comes home and slams like a six pack of Kinder Surprises, okay? I got to build that scaffolding for her to be able to fill in the rest of her life with, with as many good and healthy habits as possible as an adult.
am I the asshole for telling my friends, my, my, am I, am I, Am I the, um, am I, am I the, uh, am I the asshole for telling my F-26 friend F-26 that her, am I being awakened? Am I a sleeper agent? Is this the Manchurian candidate? Am I the asshole for telling my F-26 friend F-26 that her degree is useless if she has to leave the country to find work? I have a high school friend, Diana, who, whom recently got her master's degree. She lived in another city, and we barely ever saw each other, and she was always too busy for long phone calls. Uh, so we only talked briefly now and then. 26-year-olds these days are having long phone calls? This doesn't sound... This sounds like uh, fan fiction written by a Gen Xer. I'm a millennial. We, 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 as our generation hates the phone... I would have thought maybe like FaceTime or something like that. Group chat. She, Diana doesn't show up in the group chat that often. People still do long phone calls all the time. All right. I mean, I'm asking out of a sense of genuine ignorance, quite frankly, but... So we only talked briefly now and then. During the time she spent on her degrees, I managed to get married and start my own family. It's not that hard. Like, I, we, people say congratulations, but it is not like a feat. You could, you could do it in, like, a month if you were crazy. You don't, like, I, I don't know if you want a pat on the back or whatever, but it's just the, the way that you phrased it. it the, you've invited the comparison that it's, like, I, while she was just farting around getting her master's degree, I was actually building a life for myself. And that's not a dilemma you want to invite. During, Diana was visiting her family and we met up for lunch. I asked about her degree, work prospects, etc. She did her master's in translation or interpreting or something like that. And she said she got the job, but she will have to move to Brussels. I told her that's crazy. If you can't find a job locally as a foreign language translator, then your degree is a waste of time if you have to move to another country. She said it's an amazing opportunity that she couldn't get anywhere around here. Apparently, the job is related to the EU parliament or whatever. I admit it, I lost her with all the abbreviations she was using. It's got to be Reddit bait, man. It's got to be bait. She again said it's an amazing opportunity and she's excited. I asked her about the pay and she told me. I said my husband earns that without a degree. So I was right about the Easter of time and money. I'm going to assume that's waste of time and money. But it does tell me something that your first autocorrect option is Easter with a capital E. And she's, she said it's the starting salary and it'll grow because the first year is pretty much training and being in a junior position. I said a junior position. I again said she could have gotten a similar job here and she wouldn't have wasted six years, Andy. Instead, could have already worked Andy, start a family. Family Andy's in the, in the chat. And here's where she was rude. She said that if she was to be as unhappy as I was, she didn't want a families. She threw in my face that apparently I'm always complaining about my husband, but I'm criticizing her. He's the best husband in the world. I told her she's ridiculous and mean, and she called me an asshole, paid, and left the restaurant. I told uh, my friends about this, and they're split in who's the asshole here, so tell me, am I the asshole for telling her the truth? This is an insane post. It's one of the craziest posts I've ever read. What kind of person thinks that if you get a degree that forces you to move for your job, that the degree is a waste? The best degrees force you to move. I'm sorry, this may be a little judgmental. <laughs> if you grew up in Dayton, Ohio, and you get like a computer science degree... Your ass is out of there. You're going to, you know, the you're going to the Bay Area. You're going to Austin, Texas. You're going to even you're going to, you're going to Milwaukee or something like that. You're getting out of there. Is all I'm. Some of the best degrees are are vessels to get you out of the place in which you started. You know. I just don't understand the idea. Like, why would you work that? I, I don't know where they live to begin with. I just don't understand. The, the idea that like, oh, you worked too hard to leave. You gotta, if you were gonna work that hard, you might as well have just stayed. I'm not insulting Dayton, okay? I mean, it's not even the worst city in Ohio. Plus it's where Guided by Voices is from. I mean, it's no Buffalo, at least. Also, it is pretty uh, stupid. Assuming this post is real and we try to take it on good faith that it is even though it's obviously not. However, like, if anything, 
if any job was going to force you to move, it would definitely be being as a translator, right? Like, I don't know where they're from to begin with, but like if you got a degree in a foreign language and also you speak fluent English, let's say, it doesn't really make sense that you're going to stay in Ogdenburg, you know? I don't, I, there's probably not of a, a, a lot of like Flemish translation work there. You, you got to go where the, where the, the sun is up and then make some hay, you know, it's just, it's crazy. Also, you haven't even talked to this person in years. And then you're like, basically just insulting them. Nobody cares that your husband, you know, does well as a drywall hanging LLC. Okay. You know, like the, the world needs both kinds of work. Why are you being weird about it, lady? My husband's in the NFL. He doesn't have a degree and he makes $11 million a year. Why don't you just do that? I don't know what you're doing. I, I, cause I, my 40 time is not even close, man. It's not even in the ballpark. Anyway. I too love concussions. You could just be Patrick Mahomes. You could just never get sacked. I don't even want to read the comments because I know that the comments are going to be like, I mean, what, what are the comments going to tell me that I haven't already learned myself? Hold on, I have to close this uh, Rocket League Haunted Hollows. Apparently Rocket League. The inimitable Psionics has released a Halloween event for Rocket League called the Haunted Hollows. Coming up next with a cut from his new album, Sting. Take us away. Am I the asshole for waking my husband up? I love the, the relationship ones. They seem like the... They seem like they have the most to mine. Chat says go on r slash no, no, no. What is r slash no, no, no? I do like r slash stupid food. Oh, no, 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 no. It's not people dying, right? I'm going to stick with R slash am I the asshole for now, though. <clears throat> I hate these similar posts, man. Okay, am I the asshole for waking my husband up to drive me to pick up my car when I left my keys in my locker at work? Then look at the related posts. r slash jokes, Voldemort, so I just have to lie, r slash depop, I don't even know what that is, but it's like a picture of like, is it Jeffrey Dahmer, it says if you can't beat him, eat him, what the hell is that doing in there, r slash dnd next, unpopular opinion, sharpshooter is a blight on the game, what is, this, the algorithm is all messed up, man, A couple of weeks ago, I accidentally left my car keys in my uniform pants at work and left my pants in my locker. I don't wear my uniform home for multiple reasons. I just bring it home to wash. I have two. Why does that, it, it sounds like Tim Robinson wrote that line. I don't wear my uniform home from work for multiple reasons. I have two. I realized when I got to the subway station where I'd parked that I left my keys back at work. A half-hour train ride and no guarantee I'd be able to get back into the building because it was after midnight. I called my husband to ask him to bring me the spare key 22 times. I tried my son, but he was asleep. He's 19 and has a car and didn't wake up when I called a second time. And I tried a friend. I didn't want to call too many people because, again, it was after midnight. I kept calling my husband, hoping eventually he'd hear his phone. I wound up taking an Uber home. Okay, I see. She left her car keys at work. This is what, there's too many details. She left her car keys at work. She takes, she drives her car to a subway station, takes the subway to work. So when, on her way home, she realized that she forgot her car keys when she got to her car. So rather than drive home, she needed to be able to take an Uber. Okay, fair enough. I needed to get my car because they ticket after 2 a.m. usually. So when, I got home, so when I got home and I was pretty upset that I'd called 22 times and he hadn't answered, I continued trying to call him the whole way home in the Uber. 
When I got home, I went inside to the bedroom and woke him up. I was pissed that this had become a serious emergency. I w had this been, a I'm pissed that had this been a serious emergency, I wouldn't have been able to get through to him. Hey, it's not a serious emergency, but if it had been, your behavior would not have been acceptable. Also, I know how this sounds, but like, this sounds like a great reason to do the classic pat all your pockets to make sure you got your keys before you leave the office building. Like These sound like a lot of problems that you have with your husband that would have been prevented by you not forgetting your car keys. Now, like, stuff happens. People forget, you know, they make mistakes. They misplace their wallet. They misplace their keys. It happens. But at the same time, like, your husband didn't do anything. He literally was just at home and then he went to bed. He didn't do anything. My man, like, he, he literally just fell asleep and then woke up to you being insanely mad at him and having, like, like 50 missed calls. Talk about a shot of adrenaline to, like, start your day off wrong. Women don't have pockets, NL. She's got a bag or something. Come on, she could look in the bag for the car keys. I mean, even, if, even if she doesn't have a bag, it's not her like her husband is Levi Strauss. Her husband did not invent women's jeans. Keep on, he's getting all the, all the fire and, and he, create, he had none of the tinder. It doesn't make any sense. It's misplaced anger, man. You tell me she couldn't have had a jacket or something? Apparently she made it work every other day. So don't give me the pocket excuse. She's 370 consecutive times remembering her keys. Then one time she forgets and she's like, women's jeans are the problem. Just like take some personal responsibility. He kept saying he had my number in his favorites. So if I called twice, the second time it would go through. But he had his phone on silent and then put it on top of something soft. So he didn't hear it vibrating. He complained I was mad at him for something I did. I replied that, no, I was mad at me for forgetting my keys. I'm just taking it out on you. I'm mad at him for not having his phone on and that he's unreliable in an emergency, which thankfully this wasn't a huge one. So am I the asshole for waking him up and being pissed I couldn't reach him in what wasn't a big emergency, but what if it had been? Yes. You don't sound that, like, insane, but obviously, yes. I mean, like, <laughs> I, you, here's, here's what I think happened, okay? And I do this myself, and I think everybody does. You, you're mad at yourself. I'm so stupid. Your emotions kick up. You're panicking a little bit. As soon as you start panicking, the adrenaline starts pumping. You're not thinking clearly. Your, your, your brain is looking for something else to blame. Oh, why won't Iron Galaxy just release uh, more bots into the hopper so I can actually win a game. Oh, why won't they derank me so I can actually have fun playing this game without having to take any personal responsibility for my own actions, right? So, like, I get it. When you're, you're not thinking... It, like, being angry, being panicked, being scared, is it's like being drunk. Like, your decisions are not rational anymore. You're, you're flooded with neurotransmitters that cause you to behave in irrational ways okay and then like an hour later you're like i'm sorry i was being very stupid i was just i was in an emotional i was in a heightened state okay that being said i definitely don't think you can you don't have a leg to stand on if you're like hey you didn't react to my fake emergency as if it was a real emergency because that makes you sound, that's like a doubling down. It makes you sound like you're being like even crazier. Instead of being like, hey, just so you know, never do that again. Don't put your phone on silent. Uh, make sure like the ringer's on for at least for me. And then he would be like, oh yeah, sure, my mistake. Instead, you make it sound like you were giving him a completely invalid tech uh, test that was like, I'm not having an emergency, but I'm, it's like a fire drill and you failed. And that's why I'm mad at you. Like that is, you're approaching the situation in, in the wrong way is, is my take on it at the very least. <laughs> in an actual emergency, you would just call 911 too. You know what? 
that's the sort of thing that you and I can look at each other and make eye contact and nod. But at the same time, you couldn't bring that up in the argument. It's one of those times where like it's it's such a silver bullet, you can't use it. You have to you have to hold that in your head as like your your trump card in the argument, but then like you can't it's too powerful to use. It would it would blow out the other side. It wouldn't be fair. It's true. That's that's where the camera pans to you and you go. Michael, if it's a real emergency, just call 911. What if 911 was on silent, Jan? What if 911 was on silent? What if it's busy, Jim? You really think I wouldn't push you up against the wall? Anyway, like she he can't be an everybody sucks here. He he actually like didn't do anything. Like he did nothing. This if you look at this from her perspective, you hear like the born identity music. She's it's it's like the tension is amping up. If you look at it from his perspective, he's just like eating dinner, watching TV, doing the dishes and then like brushing his teeth and going to bed and then waking up in the middle of a a firestorm. Dude's actually just going, he's like a cartoon rabbit going like, whoo, whoo. And then he's waking up to like, yeah, Jesse, how could you do this to me? <laughs> what, what happened? What happened? Is everything okay? Your phone was on silent. I left my keys at work and your phone was on silent. Like he's just, uh, he's just living his life, man. Oh, man. You're the asshole. He's right. You're mad at him for something you did. Him having his phone in silent was an accident, just like you forgetting your keys. No one except you did anything to you here. Yes? Tr true. Yeah. I'm not, by the way, I'm not saying she can't be like a little... Because, again, when you're emotional, you're like, oh, I'm mad and, like... It's your fault. And then, like, half an hour later, you're like, actually, I was just hungry. You know? Like, it's... I understand. You got to have an understanding that flows in two ways, right? Like, I understand that you made a, a mistake. And yet, at the same time, like, I also understand why you made the mistake. I could have done something. I, if my phone hadn't been on silent, I could have helped out. But it's like the response is disproportionate to the slight in the first place. Say that you've say that you've never been able to reach someone in a, in an emergency without saying you've never been able to reach someone in an emergency. You will understand why OP is not the asshole if you have never been through the experience. For me, it was having food poisoning while six months pregnant, while my husband was off gallivanting on a mountain and didn't leave his route, and having to have the sheriff go look for him in hopes they might find him. Fortunately, he did, and it was a very awkward thirty-minute snowmobile ride down the mountain for my husband because the sheriff drove the point home. Just how much of an idiot he was by not telling him that I was recovering from food poisoning until they got to the parking lot and would be okay. He made sure my husband suffered from the worry. Women go missing at the park and ride locations late at night. For a husband to not be reachable to that extent is beyond ridiculous. What? And that's why you never fall asleep or go on a hike ever. I don't even understand the, the user received Reddit Galaxy for this post. I don't understand the I don't understand the 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 problem. I she had food poisoning while 6 months pregnant, while the husband was on a hike and didn't leave his route. Or did he leave his route and then the sheriff had to go Look for him. But why? Why did the sheriff have to go look for him? Did, was the husband the only person? He had the last supply of antibiotics in his pocket. He's the only person who knows the 12 secret herbs and spices to make ciprofloxacin. I don't understand why specifically she goes on in the... Okay. 
Ben asked why I was searching for my husband. I was in the ER. They contacted the sheriff's department to look for my husband, not just because I was dealing with food poisoning, but because I also had our two young kids with me. As for limited resources, it was a very large county with two mountain passes and the largest city in the state. I also knew which pass he and his mountaineering group was on. Since it was June, there were limited places. <laughs> so much detail. <laughs> There were limited places that they could be for practicing snow camping techniques. He forgot to leave his itinerary when he left early this morning. In the 15 years since, he's never forgotten to leave his itinerary for either mountaineering or work trips. What are you talking about? What the hell are you talking Okay, your husband, like, you're six months pregnant. Your husband went for a hike. Probably did not 15 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Did not... What did he... This guy didn't do anything wrong either. This is exactly the same post as the original. The guy was probably like, hey, can I go for a hike today? And you were probably like, yeah, sure. And then he went on a hike and like some completely unpredictable shit happened. And now he's the dickhead for some reason. Because he didn't leave his itinerary. He didn't leave a map with his point-to-point -point location when he went out with his mountaineering group 15 years ago. When you, if you ever do your hobby, when I have a problem, you're gallivanting. If I ever do my hobby and you have a problem, that's self-care. This is just, I, I don't understand what's going on here. You ever wonder why your taxes are so damn high, but it seems like you don't get anything for them? This, is the, this insane person is sending the sheriff out to go to the... To, to find one single dude on top of one of two mountain ranges so that he can provide daycare to two children? Like, it's not, he's not going to cure the food poisoning. I don't understand the... <laughs> I don't understand what the problem is here. 15,000 people read this and said, fuck that dude for hiking. It's true, I know! I don't know, is this like a, I don't know if the, it's like there's a two kinds of people in the world sort of dilemma here. I think there's some people that are like unexpected bad shit happens and you go like fuck the universe. And then there's some people that go unexpected bad shit happened and you're like, who could I plausibly blame? If, if my husband was psychic, this shit would not have happened. So fuck him. Like this is madness, man. I don't understand. He left her with the two kids? He, no, he didn't, okay? Because that's not, like, how reality works. I, I'm sure that they, in all likelihood, he didn't wake up early and go, like, I'm going to sneak off on a little, on a little hiking trip. I'm going to go on a quick 15-hour hike without asking my wife. He, they probably have an arrangement. Hey, I'll take Saturdays, you take Sundays. Are you sure you're good? Are you sure? Are you sure? Okay, love you. Let me know if you need anything. And then he went for a hike. And now, despite doing all the necessary preparatory work, he's getting raked over the coals for it. And she's, he's, she's still holding the grudge 15 years. 15 years down the road. This, this shit happened in, in the Bush administration, man. Second term, but still... This shit is older than the Dark Knight. And we're still hearing about it. It's crazy. If they already knew you were going to be okay, why use the resources of the sheriff to bring him back? The sheriff let the husband sweat it out for 30 minutes. Then once the sheriff and husband got to the parking lot, the sheriff told the husband the wife was going to be okay. Let the husband panic for a half hour. 3,000 sociopaths. Hey, your wife is, is really ill. Here's the town sheriff on a snowmobile all the way up the mountain to come get you. It's an emergency. Is she going to be okay? Why don't you just hop on, shitbag? Bet you're really happy you went gallivanting on the mountain today. You just had to go mountaineering, didn't you? Just had to go mountaineering. Well, I, I, do you, you ever know what happens to kids when they lose their mother? Oh, yeah, she's going to be fine. Anyway, she's in room 36B. It's like, would the, it is, if this actually happened, this is crazy. 
Right. Does sending the sheriff out to fetch the husband of a woman who isn't in critical condition sound like a good use of resources? Have you ever truly had food poisoning? It's my time. It's my time. At six months pregnant, it's a big deal, and OP was likely in the hospital. The husband needed to be there in case it took a turn for the worse to make medical decisions. Okay, internet, make up your mind. Is food poisoning not serious at all, or do you need to have 24-hour medical supervision in case we need to figure out if you're going to do a do-not-resuscitate order? Make up your mind. Because when I'm like, hey, if I didn't get that... I had to fight tooth and nail to get 12 antibiotic capsules... And if I didn't have them, I probably would have been dead by now due to sepsis or something. People are like, yeah, sure. What, I stubbed my toe once. I know what it's like. Or is it the sort of thing where it's an immediate emergency at all times? I get that she's pregnant. Also, if I had been pregnant, you guys would have more sympathy. It's a bit of a double standard, don't you think? Refusing to elaborate and moving on. I'm just saying if the roles if the roles were reversed, when did society get so soft, man? Anyway, I still don't see it regardless. I don't understand like the husband's fault in this. He just went on a hike. And then the whole town, including his spouse, conspired to make him feel like he was like negligent. He didn't do anything. He unless he gave her the chicken sashimi, I don't understand the problem. And th yeah, this isn't even the post. I don't even remember the post now. <laughs> Who's the post? Oh, yeah, she forgot her car keys and it's his fault. Okay. I don't get that you're the assholes. Not the asshole. I get what you're saying. My dad went through a very serious emergency a few years ago and I live out of state. She didn't. I. That didn't happen to her. Are you stupid? I know you're like, well, if it did. But it didn't. This is fiction. You're living in a fantasy world. My dad went through a very serious emergency a few years ago, and I live out of state. My mom kept trying to call my sister, who lives 20 minutes from them, but her phone was dead, even though she was at home. So she, all she was able to get was the daughter a plane ride away who could do very little to help until I flew out. Where does the, the 911 not exist? What's happening? Is this a crazy world? Like, is this a clown world? What's happening? I, I, like, okay, her phone died. Like, it happens. It doesn't make her a bad person because her phone died. I don't understand, like, why they're raking people over the coals, man. Both of the sisters are the top heart surgeons in the world. It's the only thing that, that makes sense. Or that you need them both to, like the only thing that could save him is dropping a nuclear bomb and they had the only two keys to turn simultaneously to open the nuclear football. Like I, I can't even concoct a, a reasonably realistic scenario in my head where, where these are problems that like genuinely reflect negatively on the person that is supposed to have caused them but had actually nothing to do with it at all. There are settings on phones for this exact purpose which allow families to get in touch with you in an emergency. And while yours was not a true emergency this time, dot, 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 I understand why you're worried about what you would do if you had a true emergency in the future. Okay, I thought it was going to be insane, but actually, that's fair. So what you should do in the sober light of morning is recognize like, hey, I shouldn't have been so mad at you last night about something that literally was not within your control at all. Can you please, for the future, make sure that your phone is not on silent when you go to bed and I'm working? Yes, honey. Sorry. My bad. Are you okay? Can I drive you to work today? Blah, blah, blah. And then you, problem solved. I don't understand why we're going through all these... Uh, we're going through the Socratic method. Uh, here's some shit that happened to me in 1975. Problem that was within my grasp it just gets blamed on somebody who had the audacity. He was out gallivanting at the grocery store buying food for our family. He had the audacity to be trying to parallel park in a spot that was really tight. 
And also, let's be honest, waiting for an Uber alone late at night as a woman is a little uncomfortable. I would have wanted my partner to at least know what was going on, stay on the phone with me while waiting for the Uber. Sure, okay, fair enough. Anyways, he needs to figure out a better system, especially since it sounds like you work late nights often. You know what I don't hear? What I don't see a single fucking time in this post? You know what I don't see a single fucking time in this post at the risk of sounding like a bad person? How about like you triple check when you leave work to make sure you got your fucking keys on you? I guess the husband's got to do seven. He's got, we got to develop a whole new system to make sure your husband never has his phone on silent. But at the same time, mistakes happen. You leave, you know, people forget things all the time. So you shouldn't feel bad about leaving your keys at work. But your husband who didn't have his phone on, uh, on three volume and instead he had it on a soft surface with vibrate on, like, it, at least apply it both ways. Like, I, I want to type a post in here and be like, boop, 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 boop. you ever consider, lear hey, you ever consider learning the two tap method where when you're leaving uh, any place or when you're walking around, you just tap one pocket and you're like wallet and you tap another pocket and you're like, there's my phone. You tap another pocket and there's your keys. I understand women's pants don't always have big pockets for all that stuff, but you can at least look in your, in your purse or at least wherever you're keeping your keys, you could have some sort of visual confirmation or tactile confirmation that you got the, the device that you need in order to get home and get into your house. We need to teach people about the taps, man. The testicle, spectacles, wallet, and watch. They're both assholes, but he didn't, he didn't do anything. <laughs> he didn't, he didn't do anything. His phone just happened to be on silent. He was just asleep. By the way, if you reverse the roles of this one, the interpretation is exactly the same. He would, the people would, I, I hope that they would be like, your wife should, you know, have your phone, uh, she should have her phone with a ringer on just in case you have a problem. But I, I, now I'm thinking about it a little more and I'm like, no, I bet they would be like, literally your wife was just trying to sleep. Man up, idiot. You really woke up your sleeping wife? You woke up your sleeping wife because you forgot your keys? You sound like a selfish asshole. I hope she leaves you and finds somebody that will actually take her seriously. You better check yourself before she leaves someone who will show her the respect she deserves. The dude just fell asleep with his phone on silent. It's okay. Nobody should be mad, but she definitely should not be mad. If anything, he should be mad that she left her keys. Okay, now maybe it's going too far. If, if this happened to me I, and, and my spouse was mad at me, I would be disproportionately mad at her because I would be like, that's really irresponsible of you to leave your keys at your office and put yourself in a situation that could be dangerous. Like I'm not, not to potentially victim blame. I'm just saying at the same time, like we got to both insulate ourselves from this kind of like nightmare in the future. That's why, the, do you see the kind of problems that a three tap solves? If you've, got, if you've got one important possession in each pocket and you just go tap, 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 you're good to go. I think my, my sentence here is just, could she just buy a really small pair of men's jeans to wear to work? So they've got big pockets and then one pocket has your phone, one pocket has your keys and one pocket has your wallet. And I also want to say, and I, I'm sure that men do this too, but I, I so often see it from women. We got to stop this iPhone in the back pocket thing. You're asking for trouble. I'm not even talking about pickpockets, although it's a juicy target with 75% of your iPhone sticking out of your back pocket. But one day you're going to sit down. You're going to sit down on your iPhone. You're going to crack the screen, okay? And maybe we need to completely revolutionize women's fashion to get deeper front pockets or something like that, but... We, come on. It's just, you're, you're asking, you're setting yourself up for failure when you got a, a smartphone in your back pocket. That's where your wallet goes and it just causes like a, gradually like a asymmetry in your spine that leads to lifelong back pain, okay?
is not where you put your, your iPhone, though. Anyway, I, <laughs> she, I just, I'm, why does everybody have a story of somebody else being the asshole for not being a slave to their cell phone? Like, it's driving me crazy. You're the asshole. Okay, yeah, I agree with you, but let's pass. <laughs> Not the asshole. This is a weird one. I didn't realize so many people would be okay with their spouse being out of reach unless it was something you both knew about ahead of time. Unless you both knew that an unexpected emergency was definitely not going to happen. Are you listening to yourself? Unless you both agreed in advance to not have anything urgent pop up. Redditors be like, imagine sleeping, not me. <clears throat> the recent Am I the Asshole about the dude whose fiance was MIA for nine hours. He was quite right to flip because he couldn't get in touch, but this person shouldn't be mad because I don't know. I'm sorry, I haven't done the required reading on that one, so I, I, I can't uh, agree or disagree. If I were stranded somewhere and tried to call my partner and they ignored me, I'd be upset too. I'd also point out to them that if I had been calling for an emergency, say I was hospitalized and trying to get a hold of them, they would have missed my call and that going forward they need to be responsible. That's an expectation for me, not you. If your spouse didn't know you expected support. Okay, well, um, that's fine. That's fine. Hey, just so you know, you wouldn't have had to give me 50 missed calls if you didn't forget your keys at work. As long as we're playing the nobody's ever allowed to make a mistake game, uh, whose mistake caused this whole situation in the first place? Just so you know, you wouldn't have had to call me 50 times if you just did the three tap and made sure you didn't leave your keys at work. NL, people forget things all the time. It's a habit. It's a human's mistake. And then people forget to leave the ringer on all the time. Why is it that there's a double standard on the ringer, but leaving your keys at home? And also, it's like, how is she able to get into her house without having their keys to begin with? It's like, that's also a bigger problem. That she could have been stranded outside of her house. That's why you got to check the keys, man. Redditors be like, if I had a spouse and this was an emergency, I, this would be a deal breaker for me. No assholes here. People here responding telling OP to call 911 if it was an emergency don't get the point because that completely blows out her argument and undermines her position. The point is OP's partner was unable to be contacted. If there had been an emergency, <laughs> just restating the point again. You're missing the point. The point is that if you believe what she's saying and agree with it, then she's right. He still wouldn't have answered. That is what OP means when they worry about him not responding during an emergency. OP was not saying their partner should act as emergency services. No, but like what they're saying, you're missing the point. They're not saying that like your husband would be the cops and the paramedics in the fire department. They're saying at least you wouldn't like fucking die. You would, you would be able to get some help. And then when your husband woke up, he would be like, holy shit, 60 missed calls. Let's like get ahead of this problem now, even though I've got, you got a head start on me. It's about like, I, like I understand that you're like, I would like to be able to reach my spouse at all times. But at the same time, like this is about your personal safety if it was an actual emergency. You're right. Police should have driven a snowmobile to his house. Let him stew for a little bit. Hey. Hmm. Not so good on the cell phone there, are you, Andy? Well, remember how you used to have a wife? You better hop on the snowmobile. Just kind of putter around for 30 minutes and be like, oh, no, she's actually, she came home while we were on the ride. She just forgot her car keys and was mad at you. I don't understand the, the, the fiction here. On the other side, her husband didn't do it intentionally. There wasn't malice here. Not from, not from his side. Not from his side. It's crazy, man. You're the asshole. You took one moment where everything was stacked against your husband that he didn't hear his phone go off, ignored his reasonable explanation, and jumped to, you're unreliable in an emergency? That's not a reasonable way to talk through a conflict. So true. So true. After 12 a.m., he wasn't available, mind you. Such a reasonable time of day to not be reachable, LOL. Um, no, if your wife regularly commutes home after midnight, you should absolutely be, absolutely be available in case of emergency. Hell, if you have any family at all, you should absolutely always be available. Okay, he probably agrees, but he, had his, he, he happened to put his phone on a soft surface once. 
again, it's completely reasonable to leave uh, the thing that allows you to get into your car, in your house, in your locker at work. It's completely unreasonable to uh, have your phone on silent and then fall asleep. I am a, I am a human being, by the way. You're the asshole this was. I, I can't do, I, honestly, I have, to, I have to move on from this one. Otherwise, we're never going to get to another post. This is insane to me. Again, he should be reachable, but at the same time, like, he, you made a mistake that revealed his mistake that is not even on the same magnitude as your mistake. It's like if you skipped lunch and didn't tell your husband you skipped lunch, then he came home from work and you expected him to have brought home takeout without asking him. And then you're blaming him for the fact that you're hungry. You didn't eat lunch. And he didn't text me saying, get some, uh, get some uh, you know, quesadillas on your way home. You gotta, you gotta eat a snack. Super people, early access, now live on Steam. How about that? Okay, hold on. Am I the asshole for putting my husband's